and be like, really, MCAT makers, really? Like, you're really trying to trick me here? Like, I see your tricks, like silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Like, okay, he was there with a bunch of people making MCAT questions and they're very careful, but everyone else that's taking the exam is probably struggling with it as well. Then that's not a problem because it's a standardized test score. All right, let's get straight into it, guys. These are some things that you need to know for the MCAT. Like you just have to know all this stuff. So I'm gonna go over my MCAT experience, like what you guys need to know for the experience taking the exam, um, what I got on the exam, and tips and tricks, techniques, little things that you guys need to know for two sections, for the chem and phys section and the biology and biological sciences section. So I will not give tips on the cars section because I did not do that good on cars. Like I did so bad in cars. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. So my experience taking the MCAT. One thing that you guys need to know when you're taking the MCAT is that you have no breaks. Your breaks do not exist at all. This happened to me and like a bunch of other pre-med students that I'm friends with. Um, so let's say we're sitting in the exam room and we just finished our CNP section. So we get our 10 minute breaks. As soon as you're done with that CNP section, the chem and phys section, as soon as you're done with that, then a screen pops up on your computer and it starts going the countdown. The countdown just starts going, okay? So it goes 10 minutes, nine minutes, 59, nine minutes, 58, nine minutes, 57. So your countdown is going down. Your break starts now, as soon as you hit submit for that CP section. So your break starts right there and then. So while that's counting down, while your break started, you have to raise your hand. You gotta raise your hand and wait for the exam proctor to come up to you, get you, lead you to the door of the exam room. So in order to leave from the exam room to the waiting room, you have to sign out. You have to give your ID. You have to roll up your sleeves. If they have to check your mask, you gotta turn around, you gotta pat yourself down. You gotta do all these things so they know you're not like writing or bringing anything outside the exam room and into the exam room as well. Right there, you just lost a minute. Like if you're in your seat and you raise your hand and you're waiting for the test proctor, sometimes, and this happened to me and my other pre-med friends, the test proctor is already with somebody. And if they're already with somebody, you have to wait for them to finish with that person so they can get to you. So that takes time. Your break is cutting down right now. So let's say you just lost two minutes there. One or two minutes you just lost there. Then you go to the bathroom. Hopefully the bathroom is next to your exam room. The bathroom for me was on the other side of the whole building and I lost like time there. So then you go to the bathroom, that takes time. And then if you wanna come back into the exam room, you have to sign in. You have to check in. It means you have to go again, show your ID. They take your ID, roll up your sleeves, uh, check your mask. If you're a girl, you gotta like go through your hair. Uh, pat yourself down. If you have an extra jacket, they take your jacket. If you have glasses, they examine your glasses, all this stuff. And again, assuming that no one's before you, so if someone is before you, again, when you're checking into the exam room this time, then you have to wait for them. And that takes time, bro. That takes time. And if you want to eat your lunch during your break, like forget about it. You got to run, baby. You just run. Like if you want to eat, you got to eat that shit like quick as fuck. Like you have to chow down that shit. I'm talking about like hot dog eating contest. You got to just Bum, 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 bum. And if you want to use the bathroom during your little lunch break, then you have to run to the bathroom while you're eating. And who cares if you look crazy? Who gives a fuck? Like, you just go. You just go. And I spoke to my pre-med friends about this, and they said the same thing. Like, yo, we had no breaks. Like, there was literally no breaks. And one of my pre-med friends, she lost actually four minutes from her car section because of this whole checking in process. So seriously, just run. Just fucking run. Just do it. Also, you should know that, like, you can arrive early. Like, my exam, was at 12 15 p.m and i got to the exam room like and i got to the building and the exam room at like 11 15 11 20 around there and they just let me take the exam right there so that's basically all you need to know for the experience taking the exam okay so what i got in the mcat i'm gonna put a screenshot of my test score here so on the kevin fifth section i got a 130 on the car section i got a 121 i know 121 hey i don't speak english so um, on the biology section, I got a 131. On the psych -so section, I got a 125. So that leaves my total score to be a 507. Not bad, but definitely not like crazy good. The chem and phys and the BB section, I did very good on. So I could give you guys tips, trips, trips, tips, techniques for those two sections. But for the car section, I'm definitely not gonna give you guys advice. If you guys want advice for the car section, I just recommend 
choosing another video because I'm not going to give you advice on something that like, I did bad on. You know, it's very misleading. In the psychology section, I did eh. So I'm not really going to give you that much advice on that. But I can say this for the psych and social section. If you don't memorize your shit, you are fucked. I'm going to try to tell you what's on the exam without telling you what's on the exam. Because I did sign that um, agreement thing. I know it sucks. I know, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but just you got to know everything. Literally fucking everything for this section. The psych social section, it's all memorization. So an example of something to memorize in detail would be Erickson's maybe Erickson stages of psychosocial development. Maybe it's important to know everything, like literally every freaking specific detail thing in every single stage and every single age. I don't know. I'm just saying maybe that's important. I'm not sure. It is in the, it is in the Kaplan book. I'm just saying that like, just know that one. I don't know. I spoke to my pre-med friends and they also had trouble memorizing these stages and these ages for the MCAT. I don't know if it was on their exam. I have no idea. I spoke to them. We didn't speak about the exam, obviously, knowing every single stage and every single age and every single detail in each stage. All of us, all my pre-med friends that took the MCAT, we all agreed that those stages were very good. So yeah, that's basically it for that slight social section. I don't want to give you guys more details from that because I'm not that good at it. I would not underestimate that section. Okay, my tips, techniques, tricks for the Kevin Fizz section. I scored a 130 here, so listen up. For that section, is they like to throw passages that incorporate Gen Chem and physics at once because those two fields, they can overlap sometimes. So they love to throw some questions at you from that. This section is not that bad. It's literally easier than the BB section. But Eric, you gotta memorize your formulas and all that stuff. There's so many physics equations and formulas I have to remember. Like, yeah, there are parts of formulas and equations that you kind of have to memorize. Like if you get the real gist of a formula and how it's working and why it's working, then that'll make your question so much easier because you'll memorize it easier. You'll get the concept easier. Like for example, like for an example, think of Coulomb's law. Okay, Coulomb's law is F equals K, K is a constant, Q1 times Q2 all over R squared. Okay, R squared is radius or distance. You know, they use D or R sometimes. So think of, think of, think of that equation right there. You don't have to memorize it at all. Why? Maybe you have to memorize that there's a constant there, K, which usually they'll give you. So what are they talking about? What's the hell's electrostatic force? Force between two charged particles, electrostatic force, two charged particles that are static, that are there. What happens to the electrostatic force if the two charged particles are close together? And what happens to the electrostatic force if the two charged particles are farther apart? That is the distance between them. The distance between them changes the electrostatic force. If you think of the equation, R is on the bottom. Distance D or R is on the bottom. So if you increase the distance, What's gonna happen to electrostatic force? Since distance is on the denominator of the equation, if we increase the distance, the electrostatic force will go down. Just know these relationships for every single type of equation on the MCAT. This will make sense. This will make the whole chem and physics section make like a thousand times more sense. Because a lot of times the questions on the MCAT are like, oh, if I raise this, what happens to this? If I knock out this gene, what happens to this? If I do this during this signal transduction pathway, what happens to this? If I increase distance between charged particles, what happens to electrostatic force? That is your cheat sheet. Every single formula is your cheat sheet. Why is it your cheat sheet? Because look, let's say if you're given a question, okay? And then every, if you know every unit for every single equation, like if you know whether you're using joules, amps, uh, ohms, uh, meters per second squared, Tesla, if you know all your units for each of your equations, then that is your cheat sheet and you are set for this section. Why? Well, because think about it. Like, let's say if you're given a passage and you're given a question for this section. So in the answer choices, A, B, C, D, you see all the omega ohms. You see all the omega sign. All of them are ohms. What is ohms? Resistivity. Boom, right there. You can eliminate all these other equations that you have to know and focus on the ones that have resistivity only. So a good one is V equals IR. Okay, now we look in the passage. Oh, look, they're giving us amps. I wonder what to do here. I wonder what to do. Amps is I, V equals IR. This gives me such a big hint on what the heck to do for this passage. Okay. So same thing for the gem chem shit too. If they're giving you PKA, what the heck is PKA? It's the disassociation constant, okay? But instead you take the negative log of the KA, so it is PKA. 
Oh look, they gave me a pH as well. Mm. Usually I'm probably gonna have to use Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Like that is your cheat sheet. If you know your equations and you know your formulas, that is your cheat sheet for this exam. Minimum you should get is like a 129. Of course there's some orgo in there and there's some biology and some biochem in there in that section as well. And if you're strong in biochem, which is the most important freaking subject in this whole exam, if you're really strong in biochem, then a lot of orgo and gen chem will make sense. Prioritize biochem. Um, if you guys want a breakdown of a chem phys section passage, let me know, comment down down below. Okay, also, so think about the content guidelines for the MCAT, okay? The test makers, they are very choosy, they are very picky. They are very careful in making the questions. They are very careful in making sure that this question fits the content guideline. Like my professor from my cell and molecular biology class was, a, was somebody that made MCAT questions, okay? He was there with a bunch of people making MCAT questions and they're very careful. They spend time, they're very careful in their questions that they make. They have to follow the guidelines of the AAMC. They have to follow those guidelines. So if you see a question, so this is a big hint. This is a big cheat sheet for us. Why? Well, if you see in the answer choices something that is not in the content guidelines, there's something that's not in the Kaplan books, if there's something that's not in the content guideline review, then you, and if it's, and if it's not mentioned in the passage, because the passage is like to throw like new information at you that you kind of have to dissect. If it's not in any of those, odds are that's probably wrong. Oh, I don't, all right, let's change these blue lights. These blue lights are boring as fuck. Right. Like I said before, in all my videos, confidence is very big on this MCAT. You gotta be confident as fuck when you take this MCAT. Like be a fucking cocky asshole when you take this exam. Confidence is huge. You know what's up. You're fucking confident as shit. You did all your content review. You know what's up, okay? You read the passage. The question they gave you, they gave you a passage, some bullshit ass complicated passage for no fucking reason. I don't know why, but they gave you it. You read through that passage, you're confident as fuck, you know exactly what the heck is going on. You may not know, you may not know everything that's going on, but you got an idea of what the heck is going on in that passage. Now you get to your questions. A makes sense, B makes sense, C makes sense, D, I have never seen that word before. I have no idea what the heck they're talking about. So what do people usually do if they've never seen something before on the MCAT? Oh my god, I've never seen this term before. My content review should have been bad, I should have reviewed better. Oh my God, what do I do? Because is this the possibly the answer choice? I have no idea if this is the answer because I have no idea what it is. Oh my God, what's going on? Panic, 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 panic. Okay, no, no panic, 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 panic. No, none of that. If you are confident that you did the whole content review, you were confident in the passage you read. That answer choice has nothing to do with the passage, has nothing to do with your content review at all. It's something that they threw in there to make you second guess yourself. Okay, think of it. It's something that they threw in there to make you second guess yourself. All the time that they throw some bullshit in there that you've never seen before, it's not in the passage, you've never seen before in your content review. If they throw that shit in there, it's probably wrong. They're doing it to try to trick you. They want you to overthink that shit, okay? So you have to look at it and be like, hey bro, this was not in the passage. This was not in my content review. Get the fuck out of here. You're trying to trick me. So boom, take out that D answer choice. If you want to do good in those two sections, you got to be a cocky asshole. You got to be like, okay, what next? And be like, really, MCAT makers, really? Like, you're really trying to trick me here? Like, it's obvious you're trying to trick me, bro. Like, I see your tricks. Like, silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. Like, and you're good. You eliminate another answer choice. That's literally how it goes. I made another video on how to break down, like, complicated MCAT section bank passages. So, check that video out if you haven't. I made a video on the BB section. It's kind of old. I shot it off like my I shot it off like my iPhone 7. Okay, quality kind of sucks, but it's a lot of good stuff in there. They want you to think, what the fuck did I just read? They want you to think that. And when you do think, what the fuck did I just read? Because it's probably gonna happen. Like unfortunately, it's gonna happen. They they're tricky. Okay, you will read something and think like, what the fuck did I just read? But when you do think that, think. Don't panic and think like, yo, this is obviously something complicated. So not only am I struggling with it, but everyone else that's taking the exam is probably struggling with it as well. Then that's not a problem because it's a standardized test score. As test takers, we don't know if we get 20 questions right in the BB section, that, that gives us a 131. We don't know if that gives us a 132. We don't even know if we get 40 questions right in the biology section that that can give us a 131 or 132. Again, those are kind of extreme examples, but we don't know that. It's standardized. It's against everybody that takes the MCAT. So if you see something complicated, other people saw it complicated as well. 
So I'm probably gonna make a separate channel on just straight MCAT stuff because not all my subs are pre-meds. Not all my subs are planning to take the MCAT like within the next couple months or so. So I'll probably make a separate channel on that. Um, if you guys want a breakdown of a chem phys section passage, let me know, comment that down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.